Oh, hey, let's start talking about how to choose the right size for your book. And I'm gonna teach you how to resize it because these two things are crucial for self-published authors to know. I'm gonna put this down. We are in a series on how to format your novel from scratch. But we're gonna cover, number one, choosing the correct size for your book. Number two, how the size of your book directly relates to your genre. Number three, how the size of your book actually also affects the cost, both for you and for your readers. Number four, where you can find templates with the exact size that you were looking for. And number five, if you're using the DIYbookformats.com template that I've been talking about throughout this series, it comes in a specific size. So I'm going to show you how to resize it to be the size that you want and that fits your genre and your needs. Last but not least, I will end with three extremely valuable secrets that are going to save you a lot of money by helping you make your book less pages. We're going to talk about all of that, but really quick, I just wanted to let you know that this step does apply to physical books, not to ebooks because ebooks, you don't have to worry about the size. That's a whole other animal. So I just wanted to let you know, in case you are only publishing eBooks, this video is specific to physical books. And if you've never published before, honestly, you probably have never thought about your book size. I know that I never did, but if you don't have the right size for your genre, your book is going to stick out like a sore thumb on the shelf. I will talk all about that and give you some personal examples from my experience. And then also in some cases, it can even be such an issue that your publishing on demand company will reject your book because of the size. So I'm going to dive into all of that. Let's get into it. Let me pause the video for one second. I should rewind really quick and introduce myself. My name is Bethany Atizada. I am your professor in this free mini masterclass, free for you at least. YouTube is paying me, so thank you in advance for watching the videos all the way through, for liking, subscribing, sharing with your friends. All of these things are like a free tip jar, so it really helps my channel. Thank you so much in advance. And it's looking like it's going to be a very full class. So let me introduce you to our TA real quick. This is my teaching assistant, Google. She is super helpful. She's available at all hours of the day and night, and she has pretty much endless resources. So I'm going to be honest with you, even though I am the professor of this course, she knows more than I do. You can definitely ask me questions if you'd like, but I got to be honest with you. I'm pretty much sharing every single bit of information that I know in this course. So I may often end up referring you to her because she actually knows quite a bit more than I do. There are five quick things you should know before class starts. Number one, I will be reading from my notes here on my computer pretty carefully since this is a very complicated subject and I don't want to miss anything. So if you see me looking down, that's why. Number two, I am only able to share what I know and what I have chosen to do. So just like everything else in publishing and writing, there's probably a million and one different ways to do formatting. This is just my personal experience. So despite this incredibly professional course where you're going to come out with a bachelor's degree in formatting, I actually have no formal training and I'm basing everything off of my own experience formatting over 10 different novels and sometimes learning things through what they call trial by fire. So again, I don't know everything about formatting, but I am going to share as much as possible in the series. And for everything else, I'm going to point you to my fabulous TA Google for any support questions you might have. Number three, I use this gorgeous template that has built-in formatting already set up and I highly, highly recommend it. I'll talk more about this template throughout this series, so make sure you watch all the videos in the series if you want to know more. Number four, oh yeah, did I mention that this is a series? I'm going to put all the videos in this formatting series into a playlist on YouTube that I will link below every single video. If you want to go back and watch any videos that you missed, you can find that in the description box below. Last but not least, number five, I am going to timestamp all the videos in the series as much as possible, which means that you can look at the bottom of the video to see what is in each section. And that way you can easily go back and forth and find something again if you need to watch it a second time later later or a third time, but I just want to encourage you not to skip around the first time because you might miss something really important and I don't want you to be confused. Okay, back to the video. Number one is, of course, choosing the right size for your book. The size of your book matters to your readers, first of all, because of genre expectations. So I have this lovely stack here of books to give you an example. Let's start with the smallest ones. These cute little guys are, they're roughly seven by four. Then we've got a typical paperback in YA, which is eight by F.25. 
Here is the Stolen Kingdom hardcover, if anyone is wondering. I know it's eight by five, but because it's a hardcover, the hardcover is actually adding a little lip on this side and this side. So it's actually adding length to it. So online it's eight by five, but here it is 8.25 by five, and 5.25 also it looks like here's another book in ya that was slightly different from mine this one is exactly eight and a half by i want to say it would be five and a half but because it's hardcover it's getting closer to six it's like 5.75 it's very minimal you're gonna see the difference at the top just barely sticking out just a bit in the back then got your six by nine i believe i'm guessing here oh it's even bigger because it's hardcover so this is nine and a half by six and a half all right. This is another example where self-published authors can accidentally come across as unprofessional because your book, if it's not the same size as other books in the genre, it's going to stand out and not in a good way. And I promised you guys I would give you a personal example. So without further ado, here is my debut copy of Evelyn's number and here is my second edition. I'm gonna do a close up so that you can see them side by side and you can see how this one, the first one is a six by nine and the second one is a five by eight. And here's the funny part, you guys. This is the exact same book. I did not change a single word on these pages besides writing second edition instead of first. So I mentioned in the beginning that the DIYbookformats.com comes in a six by nine, which is this. This is what I used. I didn't know how to change it at the time. So I'm going to show you guys how to change it so you can make your book smaller without actually changing the word count or anything else at all. Before I do that though, I think it's important to explain a little bit more about how your book's size actually affects the cost of the book, of printing the book. So it also affects your royalties as an author and it affects how much your reader is going to pay for the book. Let's pretend that I'm selling both of these books for an even $10, okay? And let's say that this was $6 to print while this one over here was $3.50. So it's half as expensive. Actually, I think this one's closer to four, but I don't actually remember. So we're gonna make up numbers. So you've got your $6 taken out of 10 and that leaves only $4 left for you and your print on demand company to split. With paperbacks, I believe it is a 60, 40 split. So you get 60% of that. If I did the math right, you would be making $2 and 40 cents for every one of these books sold in this size. Now let's take the same book, but I have made it smaller and let's say it costs $3.50 to print this. So now you and the public publisher have $6.50 to split between you. Let's do the math again. This book is going to make $3.90 for every book that you sell. That might not seem like much, but then multiply that by, you know, 100 book sales or 200 book sales or 500 book sales and you can see how it very quickly adds up. So that is why smaller books are better for you as a self-published author. And I'm not just talking about size because actually this size doesn't matter nearly as much as page count. So we're going to talk a lot more about how to have less page pages at the end of this video because that is also going to save you a lot of money as well. But now let's talk about how this affects your reader because let's say now that I want to make that $3.90 that I would get from this book on this book. Well, the only way to do that would be to raise the price of this book. And that is why readers usually have to pay more for bigger books and also more for hardcovers, which are also more expensive. And that is another good reason to consider trying to make your book smaller to save money for your reader as well. Then you don't have to price the book nearly as high. Okay, so how do you choose the right book size for your book specifically? My first recommendation is always to look at what's most common in your genre. So what I did is I actually took a look at the books on my shelf. I did physically measure a lot of the books in my genre. I took notes and I tried to figure out what was the most common size. When you're measuring, you're gonna measure across and from top to bottom. Don't worry about measuring the width of the book because that is going to be affected by how many pages you have and so that is something we're going to talk about at the end that's totally separate go to your preferred print on demand company whether it's kdp or ingram spark or somewhere else that you would like to print your books and take a look at the options they have on their site because not every publisher has the same sizing options but for right now let's just say that we've decided on a five by eight which is what this is and we need a template that 
is five by eight so that we can upload our book correctly to the vendor. I'm going to show you how to resize it if you want to just take your document as is and make it the correct size. But I would also first like to show you two different template options that you could do that might be even faster and even easier for you. The first one is actually KDP and they offer a bunch of different templates. So I'll link this page below on their paperback manuscript templates and they actually have right here a download button where you can download templates that help you with the formatting and they give you a bunch of different sizes as you can see right here. They also actually tell you quite a bit more about front matter and chapter pages, page numbers. They even give you a checklist for publishing. So this is a really valuable page that KDP provides for free along with a video that you can watch if you want to know more. Once you know what size you want, you can click this download button and you can get a template in the exact trim size that you are looking for. And then you can copy and paste your manuscript over into that template. The second option is of course that DIYbookformats.com template that I've talked about throughout this series. And I want to give a huge shout out to Derek Murphy for making that and making it free for authors because it really is a lifesaver. But like I mentioned, that came in the specific six by nine size right here, which is fine. That could work for a lot of people, but for a lot of other authors that might not fit your genre and you might need to resize it. So that leads to the next part, which is how to resize your book in Word. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that really quick. All right, you're going to go to format. You're going to go down to document because you're changing the entire document. This little pop-up has a lot of handy information like your margins and it has your headers and footer information. But for right now, we're actually going to click this little option at the bottom that says page setup. This is where you will see your paper size. So if you're doing a standard printer size, it's going to say in most Word documents, regular page. And then you can see all the different sizes that I have tested out here. So we're going to click manage custom sizes. Now for the stolen kingdom, the interior is actually slightly larger to make sure things like the map don't have any awkward white spacing along the edges of the book. So this map is actually slightly larger and when it's printed, it's cut off at the five by eight mark, which is what I uploaded when in reality, the document is slightly bigger than five by eight. I hope that makes sense. I don't know if I'm explaining that very well, but this is my actual document size. If any of you want to also add images like a map or other things with that bleed feature, we are going to do an entire video on it. So I'm not going to go into detail here. I'm just going to link it in the formatting series playlist below. So let's say I want to make a new custom size for an eight by eight children's book. For example, I'm going to click the little plus sign. I'm going to, you see how at the top there it says paper size 8.5 by 11. That's your average printer size. So we'll change it to eight by eight. And then I would like to title it. So if you double click, you can say children's book. I'm doing this one handed for some reason, enter. And now when I click, okay, you're going to see it's labeled children's book, the name that I gave it, and it's eight by eight inches. So you can actually create a bunch of different sizes if you would like to test out which one looks the best to you as well. Once you have your size, you're gonna click okay. And now this is a really important thing to notice. Right now it's only applying this to a specific section, which means the entire book is not going to change. You have to click that and choose whole document to make sure that the entire book is reformatted to the size that you want instead of just half of it. Once you have that, click OK. And now if you look at the left side here, this is now a square. It is an eight by eight. Look at that cute thing. Let's zoom out so you can get a better <laughs> visual of it. This is the same template that we downloaded from DIYbookformats.com, but it is now an eight by eight square, like a children's book size. All right, now it's time for my three formatting secrets on how to save even more pages and as a result, even more money. So I'm gonna take you to the Enchanted Crown, which is currently, if you look at the very bottom left here, 561 pages. Right next to that is the word count, which is about 92,000 almost. And so obviously a lot of YA novels out there are around this word count and they are not nearly as many pages. And that is thanks to formatting and saving money. So I am gonna show you exactly what I do to take off a couple hundred pages actually. Step one is going to seem very obvious to those of you who have ever done this in school and that is changing the font size. In this case, we're gonna make the font size a little Little bit smaller. So under the format option at the top, you're going to go ahead and just click font. And this is going to show you that the standard size is 12 point font right here. 
but actually because we're in a template, I wanna make sure that I'm changing the entire document at once. So you could either control all, but because I have my chapter headers in there which are different and I don't wanna change the size on them, I want to specifically change the font size for what's called the main body of my story itself. Let me pause really quick and say that I promise you I will talk more about fonts and the sizes and the style pane, which is where I'm at on the top right here right now. And I will talk more about how this works, but for right now I'm just gonna show you how I change it by clicking right click and modify and so right now you'll see that in the diybookformats.com template that I use the font size right here in the middle is 12 which by the way is in my opinion really really large for a novel the average novel size for my research is actually an 11 point font but in my case, I actually go just slightly smaller, it's almost unnoticeable, to a 10.5 font. So that is actually the font in all of my books in the Stolen Kingdom series, and I have never once had a reader notice or complain. When I click OK, this is going to adjust the entire manuscript because it's adjusting all of the main body. So let me show you what that looks like. You saw that tiny little jump there. Now it went from, what was it, 560 something pages to 460 something pages. So we have just taken this novel down by 100 pages simply by changing the font size. That's amazing all by itself, but this second change is going to do probably just as many pages. Let's find out. So you're gonna right click on main body again and click modify, or if you're not working in a template and you haven't yet set up your chapter headers, you could just do control all to select the entire novel. We're in the same place as before, but this time in that bottom left corner where it says format, we're gonna click that and choose paragraph. There's a lot going on in here. You can change your justification, which we talked about in the 10 basic rules of formatting and you can change that the first line is indented and by how much. But in this case, we're gonna look right here at the bottom right at the line spacing. So right now it is 1.4 in the template that I use. It might be different if you are using a different template for you, but I'm gonna change it to 1.15. Now watch closely as I click OK at what this does. Now we are at 388 pages. So almost a hundred pages again, about 80 pages roughly, were just removed. We just took the novel down almost 200 pages and that word count didn't change one bit. Not a single word was removed. The third and final step is one that I typically do in Adobe Acrobat, which is right here, and that is to convert my Word document to a PDF file. And I know for a fact that that's going to remove pages, but I've had people tell me that you can turn, you can convert your Word document to a PDF directly in Word. So first I'm going to test that just to see if you can also um, change the page count. So I'm going to click Save As. And then under the file format, there is this option to export it to a PDF. So we're gonna try that. Let's see how many pages this gives me. And this is totally in Adobe Acrobat, by the way. Ooh, I'm not liking what happens here on the side. I don't know what that's all about. So 388 pages. So this is why I, I'm gonna delete that. That is why I do not use the convert option in Word, although maybe there's a workaround. But I'm just gonna show you how I use Adobe Acrobat. This is super easy. I've been doing this for a couple years now. I click Create PDF, and I'm gonna go grab my latest version of The Enchanted Crown, the one that we were just working on with 388 pages. All right, no time has passed for you, but I have just gone through, uh, what has it been? A little over a half an hour of trying to get Adobe Acrobat to let me into my own account. And I even dragged out my old computer, which barely works now when the new one was not letting me in. This one would only let me convert the file online. So a little bit frustrated with Adobe, currently talking to an IT person, but I have my tea. I finally got it to work. So let me screen share this and show you. This is the online version of Adobe Acrobat. And so if you look at the very bottom right here, it now says 365 pages. So I believe if we had 388, we've gotten rid of 23 pages through converting it to a PDF. And that's pretty impressive. If you remember, we started out with, I think roughly 200 pages more than that. So just these three secrets have helped me to remove 200 
plus pages. That's a pretty big deal. Now, obviously we could also work on the content and I'm not done editing this book. So this is not the final page count because I also need to add front and back matter and maybe delete some things within the story. We'll see, who knows what happens. It's the big adventure of publishing. But I just wanted to show you the Enchanted Crown so you could see just how drastic of a difference this can make. So for readers who are asking me to make a thicker book, don't worry, it already is the biggest book in all four books in the series, but I am trying my best not to make it a huge monster of a book because I also wanna save you money and I wanna save me money and I wanna actually make money. So that is why the size of your book matters so much. And don't go anywhere because there's one other reason that a PDF is super important. It's not really to do with sizing, but I don't know where else to put it in this series. So I'm just gonna say it at the end of this video, which is that a PDF is the highly preferred format for print on demand companies when you're uploading to KDP or to IngramSpark or wherever else as a print book, it doesn't really matter with ebook, but when you have a print book, they really want you to have a PDF. It's going to make the print quality so much better and it's gonna avoid a lot of issues that you might have if you upload a Word document, including some wonky formatting that might come into play if you don't convert it to a PDF. So you'll see when you're uploading to those vendors that they do recommend you do a PDF and this is how I specifically do it, but of course you could play around how to convert to a PDF directly directly in Word as well. Hopefully this video has helped you decide the right size for your book and helped you figure out how to do that really smoothly and saved you money in the process. So now I'm gonna go on to the next video in the series, which is choosing the fonts for your book and also setting up the style pane to help you format your book much quicker. If you missed any of the other videos in the series, the formatting playlist is linked below. And thank you so much for being here, for supporting my channel by giving videos thumbs up, subscribing and telling your friends, all those things help me so much. So I really appreciate you guys and I hope you have an awesome day. I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye.